do you think that you're like, what is your mission exactly? What are you, what are you here to do? Uh, and, and why are you spending it in this ecosystem versus any other? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, my, my vision, my like purpose right now is I like what really attracted me to Hex is, is replacing traditional financial products, um, on the blockchain and building better products. And, you know, I, I really liked the, the blockchain CD and, you know, to me, it Hex offers the upside potential that you would expect from crypto, the enhanced security of, 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 that's better than your bank, and also supports the what I believe is the best investment thesis, which is compounding interest and long term time horizon. And so that's what I think really brought me into Hex. And I think it perfectly aligns with what. I think our generation is going to be seeking in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, I think a lot of people are waking up to the fact that they're, that they don't want the nine to five, um, you know, pay your 401k and then retire at 65. Um, people are, are looking for, for better investments and, my generation is making, um, you know, they, they have, they have money to invest. And, you know, I think, I think we can, we can replace 401ks and bring our generation into crypto. And so to me, um, I think, I don't know, I, I love to build around hex because it's kind of like the perfect, it's, it's like gold, right? It's like such a good standard and it's, and it's proven itself to offer, the qualities to, to build on top of, like it can be the cornerstone of, of a new ecosystem. And, um, I've had, you know, I've just had so much fun building on top of it from maxi through the perpetuals. And now with, with pool party, because, you know, it's, it's in a way, I think, um, just bringing a lot of energy back to hex. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm biased. Like I, I admit like I'm a hex maxi, but I'm not like toxic. I just, I just think it's, it's, it's the best. And so the products we build, um, I like to, I like to build products that help our team win. And, um, you know, to date we've like all the products we've launched have really supported this community, not only in just like kind of the ethos of hex of locking up a lot of hex and taking that off the market, but also on the gas fee saving aspect. And, um, yeah, so I, I think pool party is kind of like the crescendo. It's like we kind of proved it. We kind of proved this concept of hex stake pooling last year and kind of just opening the floodgates to let other people launch their own. And um, yeah, I'm excited for that. I just remember from, I think you and Dip Catcher last conversation at the uh, conference or otherwise, I uh, can't have a pool party without water. Yeah. That first. That phrase stuck out to me for some reason. <laughs> shout out to shout out to water. Shout out to water. Um, <laughs> yeah. But 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 what in particular do, do you think you have like what is the commonality between hexkins those who've been here for a while or just have been here for a year or two? I, I meet I met someone the other day. I went to documentary, watched it, uh, and I sat beside a lady who told me they came from I think either Celsius or um, man they came from uh, one of the, one of the ones that went bankrupt and they yeah. came from there to hex because they met Hexkins in Vegas at PulseCon. Yeah. And it was just one of those like, wow, you've only been here for a couple months and you're, you're going to the documentary, you're hanging out with people locally. You're, you're just really, you're into this ecosystem in a time where a lot of people are, are either leaving or they're just, they're lukewarm at best on it. Like just, I mean, a big part of the community is just kind of hanging out right now. And the other part is like, okay, we're, we're everything's fine. We're still building, but it, you come into a time where it's just this very interesting time in Hex, but she's very excited about the product. Yeah. No concerns I could see from, from talking to her. It was really amazing. So what, what do you think are some of the commonalities? And I'll, I'll just present my shirt real quick too. This may be a commonality between people that not trying to be thousandaires. Uh, <laughs> that may be something that a lot of people are looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think are between hexagons that make us so attracted to products like this? Yeah, I think, I think looking back on like the early hex days, I think there was just this fascination of, of tokenomics and kind of just like with hex there's i think in all of us kind of this light bulb moment when 
when you really understand how the system operates. And, um, and I think that that's what really carried this community through those early stages was just like this fascination with this product and trying to figure out like all the, like kind of the golden nuggets within this product. And obviously the, the T-share system is probably at the heart of it all. And that narrative, you know, was easily that, that it just kind of aligned again, back to just the long-term thinking and the delay gratification. And, you know, I think with early Richard Hart, that self-help stuff really tied into that, that delay gratification as well and mental health and just kind of peace of mind. Um, and then somehow I remember like when I went to the first hex hex meetup, it's, it's amazing. I it's, it's almost hard to describe why we're all so similar. Like there was, there was a shared fascination with hex and, but it's something deeper. I don't, I don't really, it's almost like you can't really put it into words. Um, but when you meet, when you meet hexkins in person, it's like, Oh yeah, they're a hexkin. Like it, it's like a, it's like a weird personality. And it, and I, I don't, I don't really have a word to describe it, but there is something there. Um, and I think it's, I think, I think most people that are in hex, we are like a pretty blue collar community. And I think that's a huge benefit. We're not like a bunch of, of, you know, tech nerds. I mean, some of us are, but like overall, like people work and, and they, um, they're not, they're not going to sit on their hands. They're going to like take action. And I think what Hex really offers is a, a community that's willing to support you, um, on a, a joint mission to like, to like make Hex great. Again, tying to like that no expectations thing, it was like people people had a chance, I think maybe in the first time in their life to like think, how can I, you know, with my skill set, what can I bring to the table and and uh, contribute? And I think that's why we had so many amazing early campaigns on Hex, you know, whether it was sponsoring fighters or sponsoring a NASCAR or you know, making, making all these stickers or flyers, uh, having these amazing conferences. It was like people brought who they were to the table. And then we had this amazing support system of people like, yeah, that's awesome. Let's, let's like make that happen. And we'll like, we'll donate to you to do that. And, um, you know, I think it's a little harder, obviously in the bear market when people might not have as much money to donate and, um, and make things happen, but yet we're still here, right? Like we're still, we're still streaming. We're still tweeting. We're still trying to find new ways. Um, and it's been interesting. I think, I think obviously with new people, um, I think a lot of people, we had like a, a generation of hexagons come in because they were chasing the green candles and, um, shout out to the people that, that did buy the top and they're still here and they still believe, um, I want to see those people win. So I, I want, I want to make the price go up because I, I just, I, there's like this common shared love of like wanting to see, you know, team win, win. And, um, yeah, I, I think I, I try to push for us to get back to that a little bit. Um, you know, and I, I want to encourage people to actually like start talking about hex again. Um, I think, you know, I'm kind of going on a rant right now, but I think like in the past, the past month or two, um, we've kind of gotten bored and I, I had to take kind of a break this past like week or two because it was just like, I'm just kind of over this current cycle of like what, what a lot of people are talking about on Twitter. Like there's just like the drama, the stuff that's going on right now is just like unproductive and it's not really pushing the ball forward at all. Um, so I, I want to get back into like what made hex great initially which i think was talking talking about it and sharing what it is and um i think we had to figure out kind of the the same things to like which i think is a little harder with with pulse and pulse x i i think hex had such a strong ability to like draw fascination to talk about stats and talk about the system because it was just unique um pulse is is pretty hard like it's, it's, you know, it's essentially Ethereum, right? So um, how do we, how do we, you know, figure out what it's unique uh, thing is that we're going to talk about? Um, PulseX, PulseX, I think is just early. 
we've got the buy and burn, which is kind of the main narrative, but um, you know, hopefully the, the other features get, get brought in because I think that would give us more to talk about and, and more fascination. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, I think it's just like a fascination of, of system design. You know, I think a lot of people were drawn to hex because of that. And, um, yeah, I think, I think we got to get back to that. I, I know I just, just on the pulse chain too, I think, I hope, I mean, not, <clears throat> I'm a little biased because I, you know, I write scripts and stuff and help people with validators and, and things like that. But I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I made some tweets about, Hey, to be a Ethereum validator, you just need 50 K to be a pulse chain validator. And you'd like one K yeah. bringing yeah. people in that way and being like, Hey, you can be about, you can be part of this network. You can get paid for mm -hmm. helping decentralize a blockchain network, a new one that has a huge community that's already onboarded, uh, that kind of thing to draw yeah. people in. But it, it is definitely harder than, yeah, all the game theory and all the mechanics and all the, the latter stuff. But that's something that, you know, what kicked me off talk, because I found myself not talking about Hex enough. I was like, man, yeah. you know, I'm always covering Pulse Chain. I'm, you know, this is before Pulse Chain launched. It was like, oh, you know, it's all this stuff that's going on. It was trying to track the different domains. Oh, is something new launching? What's going on? And then I felt myself like, hey, like, I want to talk about Hex more. Like, I feel like I'm not doing that enough. Yeah. And then funny enough, when the price went, when we had the stock split, yeah. I, I, I think I, and I hope for other people too, they realized, oh my gosh, like, you know, if, if you believe Hex is going to go up in the future, it just got a little bit more interesting because it got a lot cheaper right now. Mm -hmm. And hey, it's only got cheaper after that. But it's, uh, it's, it's been one of those, it just drew me back in. I'm like, man, this is, it reminded me like, this is the, this is where it all started. This yeah. is one of the greatest products on earth. Um, and it needs, it needs more attention. It needs more people talking about it. It's just the Pulse Chain and Pulse X has been the talk of the town for the last two years because it's right. just you know what we've been waiting. It's a new shiny thing that we want. We want that right. kind of new shiny thing. It's the L1. It protects us from you know gatekeeping, all that stuff. That all the advantages brings more people in. Builders, of course, we've I um, mean communities went tremendously up since uh, since its inception. But Hex is where it starts, and and I I, I don't know. I don't. It it can get. I understand how it can get boring, but I think that's only where you're you're losing track of. Maybe you're you're just not paying enough attention. Maybe it gets boring when you're just losing attention for hex. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a boring system at all. Right. I, I think we kind of we kind of got to probably got away from it because, I mean, we were talking about it for two years straight. Which I I remember talking to Dipcatcher um, when we were like a year year and a half into it. I'm like, holy cow, like how have they talked about this one product for a year and a half and, and stayed engaged enough to like be streaming every day? Um, you know, the, and, and that, that was impressive to me at the time. And now we're, you know, over three years in, and it's like, it's understandable why, you know, why it's, it's probably not being talked enough about today. Um, Cause it's just been a long time and we've, we've just got to figure out a way to like, keep it alive. Um, keep talking about it. Because there are a lot of new people, um, you know, all, like the OG people have been, you know, around it for three years. But there's a lot of new people that don't know the things that we know um, that, you know, and while YouTube is like evergreen content, um, you know, it's 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 worth continuing to talk about. And um, because it is a fascinating product and it's still very unique. But um, but yeah, I mean, I tweeted out um, I tweeted out a little while ago just some stats on like current stakers and it definitely has dropped a lot this year, but I think to me, it's more of a reflection of just a market cycle. You know, this is Hex's first real bear market. And, you know, it, it's like, now we know during a bear market kind of, you know, Hex taking dries up. Um, but also at the same time, it's like, there were a lot of other variables as well with, with pulse and pulse X. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think people are going to continue to build products. We're we're going to continue to build around Hex. Um, Pull parties, I think, going to bring a lot of energy back to it, and um, that'll be on on Pulse and Ethereum. So, yeah, but I think you're I think not we're, deserting Ex. <laughs> no, man, I, we're we're trying to save it. We're uh, we you know with with Hex stake pooling. Um, you know, people are looking for for Ethereum to solve gas fees for hex staking, but we we have the solution, and um, you know, you can already already stake uh, on Ethereum with the perpetuals and maxi, but pool party is going to allow people to create stakes of any length. So, yeah, it'll it's not going anywhere. I, I think that's I never realized this before. Um, 
uh, for Maximus, uh, Maxi, and the original tokens, and and even Perpetuals, and and, and Hedron. I co saw this stuff too, but I never really understood the power of building on top of another blockchain product until yeah. I seen what you guys were doing, what Alex is doing. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, whoa, like how can something, it just, it just, it almost like, I don't know if there's like a, some sort of scale, a longevity scale, if you will. Yeah. Like if there's so many products built on top of something else, it's harder to fall. Like it just makes yeah. sense. It's just like logically speaking, that's that much more economic energy, that many more mm-hmm. people involved that many more use cases for the product to be used, the more building on it, you know, the quality products that are built on it and able to keep people in the ecosystem playing these healthy games, the better and longer the product should survive, in my opinion, like in, in my mental model of, of doing this. And I never understood that till I saw you guys building on it so much. I'm like, man, there's all these, you know, splitting and buying pressure, all this stuff aside, like the, the fact that you have everyone so involved in making sure that this product is the most usable thing possible and all the derivatives and all the, all the uh, different features for pulled staking. And, and, you know, if you make an HSI to, to be able to transfer the stakes and if you enjoy doing stuff like that, it's, it's just for this incredible thing. I never realized until I started seeing, seeing everyone build on it. So um, I feel like that isn't that an advantage we have, you know, I don't look at a lot of other ecosystems out there, but I feel like, Nobody has this many pe- people and things being built on top of one other thing either, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 like it's like the U.S. It's like the dollar. Like, would you want the dollar, the U.S. dollar, only being used in the U.S., or would you want every country to use the U.S. dollar? Um, it's like, do you want do you want hex to be the global reserve currency? Like, that's that's kind of where, how I view it is. Um, and, and it goes for other things too, like, uh, you know, with, with Buck and the products he's building, um, I, I personally, in the next 10 years, I hope, I hope people start building, you know, I want more products built with Hex, uh, at the center because, you know, Hex is, Hex has done what it's done with only one major use case, which is Hex staking, but it's, it's just an ERC 20 token. It's just a PRC 20 token. It can be used for other DeFi too. And, um, you know, outside of just earning inflation. And I think, I think that that might scare a lot of people because, you know, it's it, again, back to what we were talking about at the very beginning of this stream about people attaching themselves to, uh, to hex. Um, you know, when we were launching maxi and, and when Alex was launching Hedron, people had attached themselves to what they thought hex was. And so when we came in and we're like, oh, we're going to build this new thing that kind of brings a different approach to how to use Hex, it, it challenged a lot of people. It challenged like their paradigm of, of what Hex is. And it took a while for people to like accept it and be like, okay, this is, this is good. But, um, you know, now we're over a year and a half in and um, people love it now. And I think, I think that it's, it's like, in order for hex to become something bigger than we all thought it could possibly be in order for it to continue to do 10,000 X's um, we, we have to be willing to be open to new uses for it. And um, again, like this is like, this is like the first round of hex products that are being built and they're still very focused on it's one use case of hex staking, but you know, imagine what people could build outside, you know, that, that isn't even focused on hex staking, whether it's like leverage or, um, you know, lending that those, that's all things that add to buy pressure on hex and, uh, it's utility. And I, that's like the next wave of, of products I hope to see is, um, you know, new uses for, for hex that, that people haven't even thought of. Um, I think that would be really exciting. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't hear anyone talking about, uh, other than maybe Richard talked about a, a, a few of the ideals in the early days around, you know, the uh, pulled staking and um, uh, even the, the tradable, tradable stakes and stuff like that, too. Like, mm-hmm. I remember clipping a few of those out uh, and producing them, too, which, and then that was, that was a cool thing, though. He would talk about these things and the community, hey, go build it, boom, build it. Yep. And he, he's even mentioned, you know, Maximus and Hedron. Uh, before on streams, uh, which has got to be one of the coolest shout outs uh, yeah. you could get from, from, from the guy. Um, yeah. 